This is Rescue on Fractalis, or Fractalus, or however you like to say it. It's one of Lucasfilm's first games for a home computer, and it's a marvel of technology. The big deal about this game is that it uses a fractal landscape generator to make these real-time mountainous landscapes on, you know, in 3D on an 8-bit uh, processor. And that's no easy feat. I mean, not only have I not seen an engine like this since, but engines that used, say, polygons actually ran much slower from what I saw back then. But how does the game play? Is it any good? But before we begin with that, one thing I thought was really cool is that on the front side you've got the Atari edition and on the back side of the disc you've got the Commodore 64 one. Okay well let's watch the Atari one and see how it goes. One thing to keep in mind is that this is a really easy game. So Let's start on level 16. And let's watch this really cool launch sequence we've got here. So the goal of Rescue on Fractalis is to rescue the pilots who are stranded on this planet. And that's easier said than done because there are turrets and saucers after you. That beeping you hear means the pilot is nearby. And you can see that little green blip on my main screen. That's the uh... That's the ship. And what you do in this is you turn your shields off, the pilot comes running, and then you wait for him to bang on the airlock, and then you let him in. And there's that nice moment of suspense between turning your shields off, seeing him running, and then hearing the binging on the airlock, because sometimes this happens. Yeah, so you've got aliens masquerading as pilots to rescue in this game. And that's one of the only things that could actually kill you in this... Um, I mean, watch as I'm taking hits from laser cannons, and I'm barely getting damaged. And not only that, but every guy you rescue gives you a little bit of energy back. So this game is really light on challenge. And that's a shame because the rest of the game is really good. It just doesn't have that old school intensity that you'd expect from a game like this. I mean, if you take a game like Solaris or Star Master, which I previously reviewed, or Star Raiders, there's, you, you know, you really have to have quick reflexes and make some good strategic decisions to win. This game really has none of that. It does have really cool day-night cycles, but yeah, almost everything positive that I'm saying about this game has to do with the graphics engine or has to do with kind of the, the layer of, of polish that it has. And let's talk about the gauges you're gonna look at. On the very left is a column of vertical lights. That's your thrust. Next to that lights up when you get close to the ground and shows the terrain. You've got your artificial horizon. Then you have a altimeter that also shows kind of a zoomed out view of how high the ground is. There's a radar that shows where gun emplacements are and ships that you need to rescue. Beneath that shows when you're being locked onto. You've got your green energy meter. And to the right of that is your long range scanner. There's also that yellow horizontal bar at the very top of, the, of this screen 
and that shows how much wingspan clearance you have before you hit a mountain. And then you have these gauges, the range to the nearest pilot, enemies destroyed, and pilots left to rescue. I also want to take a second to say how impressed I am with Atari's 8-bit computer hardware. I mean, I'm a Commodore guy. I grew up on a Commodore 64, I got an Amiga, um, but Commodore is not known for their build quality. I am playing this in part because my Commodore's power supply blew up, um, which is not uncommon. Um, looking at the Atari, it seems a lot more solid. It came out earlier, I, I believe it came out in um, 79. It loads fast, I mean the disk drive actually loads this game in under a minute. Um, very impressive, you know, and the LucasArts screen comes on about as soon as it starts loading. So, um, the Atari might have won my heart. <laughs> it, it does have some shortcomings compared to the Commodore, for sure. Um, I, I believe the resolution is lower. The, um, the sound chip is definitely not nearly as good. Um, and I believe it lacks some of the graphics capabilities of the Commodore. Although the, um, the processor is faster, I, which I guess makes up for it a little bit. Yeah, this game actually runs uh, smoother on the Atari than on the Commodore. I, I believe this was the intended platform. And as it gets towards nighttime, you'll have to fly through these canyons using just these gauges. And you'll refer to them a lot anyway, because that's the most accurate way to fly to begin with. It would be really cool if you had to fly at night using only your gauges, and you couldn't just run into the canyon a million times. Here's some of that day to night transition I was talking about. It gets very dark and then it phases out and becomes pitch black. And enemy turrets will illuminate the night sky. I don't know why your guns don't, but theirs do. Worth noting is that you turn your shields off so that the pilot approaches. If you turn them back on, the pilot gets zapped. And that's how you dispatch of these, um, these aliens. So that pretty much sums up Rescue on Fractalis. If you're a collector, um, it's really nice to have in your collection. If you're just going to be a game player, then I don't know if I can really um, wholeheartedly recommend this one, unless you're really interested in graphics. If you're looking for a really cool early LucasArts game, I'd recommend Ballblazer over this. If you're looking for a first person big shoot 'em up game, I'd recommend Sky Fox over this one. But if you absolutely have to have Rescue on Fractalis, get the Atari one. It actually runs a little bit faster. Okay, cool. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.